Welcome to Smith Way Training. Scott Goodman and I'm Tom Arnold. I helped to put this together that you can have some ideas of what you might need to do to maintain and operate a Smith Way. To begin with, we're going to introduce you to the panel. And we will now begin to show you where that panel is. We will begin today by introducing you to the processor. The processor is just as its name, name implies. It receives and passes on information. And we will begin by looking how it receives information through its nominal voltage inputs. And these are the red wires at the top of the processor. You will notice that they also are numbered, they are labeled, and that helps us identify where they're coming from. Now these are nominal voltage inputs, which means it's a 120 volt input that lets the processor know what might be active at the time and what is not. Input zero relates to the mode of operation. In other words, is it in cool down or is it in chick mode ready to transport birds? Input number one relates to generators. Specifically, it would let the processor know that a backup or a smaller generator is running that is not able to carry the full load of the unit. This enables the processor to prevent cooling or heating from being energized. Input two relates to the rear door. This input energized means the rear door is closed. Input three is a spare. Input four means that fan contactor number one is running. Input five indicates fan contactor two is energized. And input six indicates that fan contactor three is energized. Now these relays control the overhead fans in the back of the trailer. Next to that we would have input number seven. When number seven is energized, it means that the exhaust fans are not running. When it is off, it means they would, of course, be energized. Input eight tells us which generator is running, whether A or B. Energized means A generator is running. So that is a summary of the nominal voltage inputs. Next to that, we have blue wires, and this is where the analog inputs on the brick itself begin. The blue wires are related to voltage, and it receives an analog signal here from a voltage transducer. And this tells us what the actual voltage is at the moment. Relays or inputs next to that that have no wire in them at the moment will relate to uh, motors in the air conditioning unit. This informs us of how many amps the evaporator motor or the blower or the condenser fan motors are pulling. In addition to receiving information through the analogs right on the brick, we can add to this unit by putting cards to the right of it. This first card is the way it recognizes temperature. It's called an RTD card. And we could liken that to the way we feel temperature. This is the processor's way of feeling temperature. In addition to that, we have an analog card that is dedicated to the pressures within the AC unit. Just as the analog on the brick that relate to the air conditioner motors, this one looks at air conditioner pressures when they're running, of course, and when the unit is also idle. So this is the inputs that we watch over or look at the air conditioner unit. Next to this, the next analog card is the one that 
listens to what the generator is telling us in relation to oil pressure and water temperature. This, of course, is recorded, and on the Seymour unit, uh, we display this information for you as well. So this is how this unit gathers information. The unit is also able to pass on information. And this takes place through the bottom terminal strip, which is what we call outputs. So this is information that it is passing on. I guess you could say this is how it speaks to other components. L1 and L2, the way the unit is energized, is also in this bottom terminal. Everything else on the bottom is an output. And we will take a look up to the relays and show you what it speaks to. If the output of the processor are the way it speaks, the relays would be likened to messengers. As the processor speaks to the messenger, it then passes this information on to the desired location. Output zero is exhaust fans. Now the way where the program is written, should the processor fail to function, there are certain things we want to be sure take place. Therefore, if the processor is off or fails to function, we want all the fans, exhaust fans, intake louvers, overhead fans, pressure fans to run. So we have written some of this in what we call a reverse logic. So that if the processor fails, the exhaust fans would run. Output zero is exhaust fans. When it is off, they are energized. Output one is emergency louver. This is also one that it, when the relay is off, the louver is energized. several relays that are what we call true logic. And this third relay, or relay that we would call uh, output two, this relates to heat. And you can see in the video that the green light is energized and the orange flag in the top is also present. When you see this condition, you would know that the heat has been asked to run and should in fact be running. It's also interesting to note that when the green light is off, the flag disappears. If you were to see a flag and the green light not be on, you would know that as a faulty relay. If you would see that the green light is on and the flag is not in place, then you would know also that the relay is faulty. Output three relates to the air conditioner as well as output four. Since we are controlling two compressors, output three relates to compressor one. Output four relates to compressor two. So again, if you see the relay energized, the air conditioner should be on. If it is not energized, the processor is not calling for it. Now, if we go to, to output number five. Output number five relates to the driver's side fresh air louver. When this relay is energized, the louver should be opened. The relay next to this is output number six. When this one is energized, the louver must be closed. And then we go on to the number seven relay. And this relates to humidity. It's a spare in many vehicles, but it is an option that we have. This is also true logic, which means when the relay is energized, we are asking humidity to be introduced to the body. Next, we look at the voltage monitor. You will notice that there is a dial on the face of the monitor as well as numbers from 200 to 240. So it can be adjusted. 
we typically set this unit at 230 volts. That's where we would want the dial set to 230 volts. Then it monitors not just the voltage, but also the phasing or the polarity. And uh, when everything is right, the red LED on the unit is energized. If this unit is not satisfied, it will fire an alarm. The final relay in this rack, next to the phase monitor, is our alarm relay. And it is relay number 10, or output number 10. When this relay is energized, the unit is happy, there are no alarms. When this is not energized, we are passing on alarms. Now remember the reason for this. If the unit fails, we want you to be alerted that there is a problem. So if the processor is not passing information to this relay, then you are in alarm and that gives you a warning. Next to this relay is a voltage monitor. And this is where we get the digital readout on our Seymour screen and in the processor files. It does not look at phasing, but it does look specifically at uh, the voltage being produced. The processor also has a user interface, a gray LED screen that passes information on to us and allows us to interact with the processor. But to the left of that, you will indicate some very important indicators. The top green light is power, indicating the unit is energized. The second green light is run, meaning the processor receiving and passing on information when a program is present. The third light, when energized, will be red. That indicates fault. When the unit has faulted, it will neither receive nor pass on information. The bottom light will be forced. You can see it is amber, and it is on strictly for the purposes of this video. In normal operation, it will never be energized. Now to go back to the LED screen, this allows you to review parameters within the unit. So if we press the OK key, it will take you to the front temperature and display what is happening there. It tells us it is feeling 76 degrees. The rear temperature is feeling 76 degrees. As uh, the discharge temperature is showing a temperature of 55. And that is because the discharge temperature sensor is located in the AC duct. So if the heat is on, it will be much warmer. And if the cool is on, it will be lower than the ambient temperature. That is a way that you can monitor the progress of the unit. The final temperature setting is outside temperature. And that displays a real life temperature in Fahrenheit. You can also look at your chick mode set point. Here it is 78 degrees. That is our typical setting. You can see the egg mode set point. Typically that is 65 degrees. And we can also see what our humidity is at the moment when that is present. And your humidity set point and run time and off time and also the revision of your program. On this unit, you'll notice it's revision 604. You can also, by pressing the escape key, go to another screen that will indicate for you I.O. status, monitoring. You can review some of the files we've just looked at. But in this field, you have the option of writing to it or changing it. You also have the option of going to the mode switch and moving it from run or remote run to program and back to run. You would do that in the event you wanted to reset the processor from a fault. There are many things you can accomplish here, but I would recommend that you look at your Smithway manual and use that as a guide if you need to be involved more deeply with this screen. To the right of the processor, you will notice a Rhino power supply and next to that what we call a switch. Beginning with a Rhino power 
supply. We have to feed certain transducers uh, in order that they are able then to communicate with the analog cards on the right hand side of the processor and just to the left of the power supply. These are only present when we're really monitoring them via the Seymour uh, touch view panel. So this is a 24 volt power supply that energizes uh, transducers. It will also uh, energize a radio when present and the Seymour screen itself. Enabling the processor and the Seymour to communicate and the radio to communicate, we have what we call a switch. You will notice the yellow Cat5 cable on the bottom. This brings communication from the processor to the switch. And the other cables would take it to the Seymour screen and the uh, radio uh, respectively. We will talk about these things more in more detail later. New in 2013, we combine the controls and power distribution into one panel. You're now looking at the breakers and they are labeled. Typically this labeling and the legend is located on the interior cover, which is a clear screen, allowing you to see all the components within the panel. Breakers one and two energize pressure fans. Breaker number three powers up the processor. Breaker four is the Aon of the main bowler. Breakers five and six are overhead fans in the rear of the trailer. is the lights. Breaker 8 is the exhaust fans in the rear of the trailer. Breakers 10 and 11 are compressor 1 and 2 respectively. 12 and 13 are heaters 1 and 2 respectively. In addition to this, to the right of the breakers one through eight, what we call the fan controls or the fan contactors. The one on the left, of course, is contactor one. That controls overhead fans one, four, and seven. The middle overhead fan contactor controls fans two and five. The third controls overhead fans three and six. You will also notice on these contactors that the bottom section is an overload that has a dial that can be moved. This is to adjust the amperage that the unit is looking for. Typically contactors two and three are set at four and contactor number one is set for five. You will also notice a blue button. You can test the unit with that. And the red button is a reset. Down below, you will see a 24 VAC transformer. There are three fuses in the front of it. The top one is a spare in the event that one of the other two fuses would blow. The middle fuse controls the fresh air damper. The bottom fuse controls the heat contactors in the rear of the trailer. This unit is energized whenever number three breaker or processor breaker is on. Now beneath that, this is where all the terminations are made coming into the bottom of the panel. Each one is numbered and each one, there is a legend of course that explains what these serve and they serve both inputs as well as outputs. 
And this is how we receive and send information from the control panel to the rest of the trailer. And to the very right of that, you will see where the incoming power lands inside the cabinet. It's a three-phase unit, so you will notice we have line one, two, and three. To the right of those is a smaller lug that serves us for the neutral. And to the left of that, we have our ground. Hello, and welcome to the next part of the Smithway video training. My name's Scott Goodman, and today I'd like to introduce to you the Smithway Touch View system. Earlier, Tom spoke to you about the Smithway control panel. He went into detail of how the PLC and the program we've developed is used to control the environment in the trailer. He explained to you how we use inputs to monitor conditions so that we know what the temperatures are, we know whether doors are opened or closed. We know whether devices are on or off. He also explained to you some about the small operator interface on the front. Those of you who have bought a Smithway in the past will know that one of the ways to be able to look at the information in the PLC is through the small operator interface. Uh, it is functional and it does allow you the ability to do the things you need to do, but it's not very user friendly. At this point, I'd like to introduce to you the Smithway TouchView system and show you what capabilities you have today. We knew there had to be a better way to interact with the Smithway than through the small operator interface on the front of the processor. In 2009, Smithway began development of the TouchView system. By 2010, it was available as an optional upgrade. Many Smithway customers have now written the TouchView Extreme package into their new vehicle specs. So, beginning in 2015, the base TouchView system will be standard equipment on all Smithway units. The TouchView system begins with a major upgrade to the operator interface. We now offer a 6-inch color touchscreen with custom programming and screens developed specifically for the Smithway. In the Smithway trailer, the touchscreen is located in the unit room with the control panel and the generator. A remote wireless display is available for monitoring in cab as well as while working around the trailer. In the straight bodied Smithways, the touchscreen is located in the cab. We do this so we maintain a hardwired connection because the TouchView system is not only a monitor but is also a data recorder. It's recording its data at 10 second intervals to a USB memory stick. These files allow you to view real-time trends, look at historical data, and print reports. The base touch view system monitors the four temperature zones, front, rear, discharge, and outside. Here on the main screen you can see your temperatures, your set point, you can see your voltage level, what mode of operation. You also see your fan status, louver, as well as your door position. Screen navigation is made easy through the main menu. Let's look at the system status screen. Here we see this TouchView system is taking advantage of additional sensors to monitor compressor pressures as well as blower and condenser fan amps. By adding additional sensors to the base TouchView system, this is now what we call TouchView Plus.
The TouchView system offers real-time trending. Our trends menu will show that there are trend screens available for temperature, control, amps, pressure, generator vitals, and voltage. This temperature trend is typical where it shows that the discharge temperature is our green trace. The red and teal shows that the AC or heat are on or off. The trend screens will give us a graphical representation of system performance in real time. All trend data is being stored to the USB memory stick for viewing later on your PC. Use this data to create or print reports for trip performance, maintenance, or even training. Here's an example of one of the data files from the USB memory stick being opened and viewed in Excel. Even though the data is being logged and recorded at 10 second intervals, the files still are very small. The USB memory stick makes them portable. Control and alarm set points are now easily adjusted through the set points menu, provided you have the password. Temperature set points can be set easily, as well as the dead band for both chick and egg and cool down mode. Touch view allows you to set high and low alarms. Also set sensitivity through delays. Compressor pressures along with delays are also adjustable. Aon blower amps, as well as the condenser fans on the roadside and curbside. Louver set point adjustments. Voltage and generator along with Delta T are also now adjustable. The alarm history screen is where you can view any previous alarms. The alarm name, number, time and date are recorded here. For those alarm conditions that can't be taken care of right away, we give you the ability to silence or disable those alarms temporarily. In the alarm disable screen, we see a menu of alarms that are available in today's touch view. These alarms, though silenced, will re-enable within approximately an hour to check to see if the alarm still exists and will automatically reset any time the generator power is cycled. The system will automatically capture screenshots in the event of an alarm. The operator can select screens and save them to the USB memory stick at any time for any reason. In emergency situations, the TouchView system offers through the maintenance menu a manual control screen. This screen is also password protected. The screen allows the operators the ability to manually force the heat or the AC on. But in this mode, it's up to the operator to monitor the touch view temperatures or any secondary monitors to determine how to manually operate the Smithway. To leave this screen, you must return to the auto mode. Display settings is where you can adjust the system time, you can increment or decrement the hour of the day, as well as adjust the display brightness. Here you can learn the status of the inputs and outputs that are currently active on the processor. There it is, in 2015, the base touch view system becomes standard equipment, and with additional hardware and sensors, the TouchView Plus system can help you monitor and maintain critical equipment better than ever before. Now, let's take it to the extreme. With the TouchView Extreme package, we install a remote antenna and cellular modem. The modem is then connected via Ethernet to the TouchView network. Once activated on your company's cellular account, you will then have remote access to your Smithway TouchView system over the Internet. With the proper credentials, users can log on to their Smithway TouchView system using any internet browser. The system will download the software necessary to connect and go online. For Apple, iPhone, and iPad users, a custom app is available for $4.99 at the Apple Store. By having connection to the internet, not only means that you can talk to the system, 
but the system can talk to you. Alarms can be sent via email or text to up to 10 recipients. The email or text will announce the alarm by showing the unit with the alarm, the alarm name, and the date and time that it occurred. And last but not least, the TouchView Extreme package offers GPS tracking. There are many third-party services available that are compatible with this feature.